Hi guys, thanks for stopping by Peace Garage. Next thing up for the 65 Mustang, we're going to change the fuel tank. Now I've already done a lot of work to this car to make it nice and reliable for the upcoming cruise season. I took out the old battery tray, put in a new one, and a new battery hold down. I changed the battery wires, starter relay, alternator harness. I fabricated a new pump to carb fuel line, put in a new carburetor, a new rotor, cap, plug wires, and coil, fuel line and filter, new gauge harness, brand new dash pad with correct trim, fix the courtesy lights, install new carpet and new shifter bezel, put in a new radio, a fresh package shelf with new speakers, put in the rear seat trunk divider, made a new brake line from the front all the way to the rear axle with a new flexible rubber hose, straightened the rear bumper, painted and installed a new rear valance and installed the bumperettes. Even after all that work, I still have to change the fuel tank. Now the reason I'm changing the fuel tank is because as you drive along every once in a while the engine would quit and it'd feel like it's, it's starving for gas. It's like it was out of gas. Since, since the gas gauge is broken, you really don't know how much gas is in there. So what I did was I took a gas can, sat it next to the car, started up, and it ran great. And since it's running great with the can next to it, I'm assuming that there's something wrong with the fuel system. So we're going to take the fuel tank out, see what's wrong inside of it, and while we're at it, we'll put a new tank in, new sending unit, make sure the gauge works, make sure the fuel line is clear, and get it running. Why someone would literally braze, cut and braze a tank and then cover it with all this fiberglass is beyond me when a brand new tank is like 150 bucks. What a waste of time and what a mess. I have no idea why someone would do this. I pull out the sending unit and the filter here that was on the sending unit is all uh, plugged up and there was this big silicone, looks like a silicone snake that was in the tank. It looks like it was dissolving because it was all broken up. Plying up the filter and on top of that this braze job someone did here is terrible. Absolutely terrible. There's pinholes all over the place so moisture was getting in the tank and you can't see in the tank, but as you can imagine, it is full of rust. No wonder things were getting plugged up and nothing was getting up to the uh, carburetor. Total hack job here. Here's where the tank came out, and it's not awfully bad. But I will clean that up with a wire wheel, make it nice and neat, and then we'll uh, put some uh, insulation or a, a uh, st weather strip in there, and we'll drop in the new tank. So just to verify that the one that was in there is no good, I'm going to test it real quick. This is as, as it was sitting in the tank. So this is empty right here. And this should be uh, 60 ohms. And as I move this, so this is, this is broken. This is why the gas gauge wasn't working. So I know the new sending unit is going to help fix that. Before I put the sending unit in the car, I just want to make sure it's working and I want to check the gauge. Uh, when you check your sending unit, you just clamp it down on the vice and hold it in place. Just ground your uh, gauge anywhere on there and it should read about 8 to 10 ohms. Um, right there, so I'm right about 9 ohms. This is upside down, but as the uh, tank empties, this should go up to about 60 ohms. So we're getting your empty tank and it's right at 60 ohms. So this sending unit is working perfect.
here's a quick pro tip for you. If you use two of these cork gaskets behind the filler neck, when you put the gas cap on, it won't rub on the paint and scratch the paint. And the best thing about it is when you turn on the key, now the gas gauge works. Okay, so now we have a new fuel tank. The car drives and runs awesome, and we are ready for the summer cruise season. Thanks for stopping by Peace Garage.